The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Hey, what's up, guys? Morning, buddy. Just uh, getting ready to give some certified financial advice. Anarchist financial advice. Come at me, bro. <laughs> no, actually, please don't. If you could find for you not to. <laughs> oh, you actually are way quieter than body now, Doug. Uh-oh, really? It's happening again. Huh? No, I think it's I think it's the level was the same before, but I I didn't realize because I didn't have anything to compare it to. Oh, I can turn okay. my mic down. Here, hang on a second. I'll yeah, body's a little loud, so he turns his down. Doug, you turn yours up a little bit, and then you should be good. Alrighty, wait. You know what? Because then there's there's a bot. There's volume controls on. Oh, yeah, I see bodies. Hold on. On StreamYard itself. I have the automatic set on my mic. For whatever reason, my microphone is like flashing at me when I try to turn it down. Like the microphone well, has a light on it? I'll pump my yeah, like there's up a... a little bit. All right. Is that's, that a little that's... better? Yeah, okay. that's better. Now you two are more even. Okay, okay cool. cool. All right. Well, any, uh, I don't know, any other things to talk about before we launch into a bunch of macro bullshit? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not really. Man. I haven't been paying a lot of close attention to uh, to the uh, to the doings this week. I don't know about you. I've had my head in, in other places, so you tell well, me. What, favorite... what did I miss? Our favorite central banker gave um, his monthly FOMC speech. It's not exactly monthly, but almost. Um, so Jerome Powell got up and talked about um, the economy and recovery and inflation. Um, he didn't really say anything of that great importance, except for like one big one big headliner item. So first of all, they, they kept the interest rates the same. Um, and then second, uh, he talked about that most of the people on the Federal Reserve Board think that it will be appropriate at some point this year to start lowering rates. Um, they further expounded upon the, um, the conditions by which they might think a rate drop would be appropriate. So, um, yeah, I guess that, that could be coming. He didn't, he wasn't specific about like any time frame, um, nothing like that. He just said, Hey, it seems like this is probably coming. We think this is, this is going to be appropriate here. Um, I think he, I'm pretty sure he said this year, I'm like 90% sure he said probably this year, but, um, as always, they say that they're data driven. So, um, I guess like that's kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing because if rates start dropping, um, that does scare us a little bit because that's like, that's the pattern for the markets dropping. It won't scare me because I've got a decent amount of cash sitting on the side ready for that. Maybe the, you know, maybe it'll just pass me by. So, uh, who knows, but anyways, I got my fat stack of Monero. So, um, you know, I'll be holding on to that. So basically stable coins right now. Um, okay. So let's just talk, let's start with Monero. I added some new stuff. So hopefully, um, hopefully for anyone out there that wants to see more Monero price related things, um, you can be more bored. <laughs> it's just flat. Um, all right, we'll start with the usual stuff. So this is Monero versus the U.S. dollar. Um, actually, we're, we've kind of moved up to the top side. So after this little bit of a washout here, Monero has kind of bounced back up. So that's nice. Um, we saw the same thing. Like you see that reflected in the charts, the relative valuation of Monero to Bitcoin. Um, so. This chart still isn't that great, but <clears throat> you know, the longer that we can just like trend sideways, there's maybe a slightly better chance that we don't come back down to the downside. Um, I've actually been spending a lot of Monero. I need to top up again, so I'm I'm kind of um, hoping that that this thing gets to to the downside here, so I can I can refresh my reserves. Uh, Monero versus Ethereum um, has actually gotten back and is now like this chart. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> this chart appears like it is probably. Um, found some kind of bottoming here. Uh, I mean, it's, I say that it's hard to say that things can change quickly. Um, I tend to think that there's still probably a little bit more upside, um, for crypto, kind of like we talked about last week. Um, you know, we really, we expected this, this move back to the upside. We weren't really too scared. Um, it, it did seem like grayscale rebalancing it's, um, it's ETF because previously it was a trust and they were, they had that negative nav where they're, um, their trading price on the NASDAQ was negative to the, like the full assets of Bitcoin they held. So they actually had to sell off a lot of Bitcoin on that ETF um, after it converted. So I think that was probably a factor um, 
in in the price drop. And uh, once that finished, we said, okay, there's there's a decent chance things are going to move up. And um, luckily, that's what we've seen. So we've got some more gains. Probably m some people on the show hold more than just Monero. Um, although I'm sure we have some Monero extremists out there as well. Uh, we, uh, we've seen something interesting with Poloniex where they just continue to be highly price divergent and doing pretty significant volumes below Kraken. So everyone else is mm, pretty centered around the zero point, but Poloniex is still, um, still remains fairly negative in that regard. So I don't know what they're doing over there. I don't know if that means anything. I don't trust them. I don't trust Justin Sun, but, uh, you know, that, that, that's what the chart looks like there. So today I also thought, um, that we could look at some other stuff with uh, basically Monero price relative to other assets. So for example, we're looking here at the XMR versus gold chart. Uh, and since gold is kind of flat too, like there's just not a whole lot of volatility. Um, it, I mean, you, you'll notice it looks almost exactly the same as the Monero versus USD chart. So um, not much to see here. Again, just trending sideways, uh, falling volatility. I, uh, I tend to think, you know, that this chart could actually... Um, could trend sideways maybe longer than even the, the XMR USD chart because, um, you know, it seems like gold and Monero might, maybe I should do a correlation analysis on them at some point, but um, it seems like gold and Monero, since they have that like similar dynamic with their price that perhaps um, maybe Monero and gold pressure release valve gets, um, gets released at the same time. So um, there's a, uh, we could look at the Monero versus the NASDAQ as well. So uh, this chart is not as fluffy, happy goodness as, uh, as our stablecoin price. Um, cause it's kind of going down, right? NASDAQ is going up Monero has been going down. This almost looks like a falling triangle. So if we were to, to draw this right here on a more on a shorter time frame, oops, you could almost call this, um, a falling triangle. Let's try and draw that. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of get this, this situation where it's doing that. Um, it's not exactly a triangle, right? Because these these top points don't connect, but it's it's basically like you know you've got this flat bottom and in this like lowering lows here. Um, so I mean I wouldn't call that like the best looking chart either. But uh, hey, you guys asked for it, so <laughs> this is what that chart looks like. Um, wave magic on it. You know what? Because of the way I have the script, I always have to do. I have to multiply by a significant amount to um to get the lower lines to show up sometimes usually when I'm dividing assets by each other. So on the wave magic, this is actually headed down to this lower standard deviation cluster. Uh, and again, this is Monero versus the NASDAQ, right? How are we performing relative to the NASDAQ? So, um, you know, you just divide the one by the other. So uh, yeah, right now, I mean, I, I don't like the way this setup is looking. It, it doesn't necessarily have to go down. I don't think that the NASDAQ necessarily has like a whole lot more juice to squeeze. I think it still has more juice to squeeze. I think the direction is still up. We'll take a look at that in a second. But um, yeah, I mean, not not the best looking chart here. This could um, plausibly, this this chart could plausibly, um, from a wave magic standpoint, uh, the price could like kind of trend here on that bottom, uh, lower standard deviation, and then, and then maybe rebound. And if we've got like a bull market coming to us, maybe within the next um, six to nine months, um, or starting next year, then then yeah, I mean, maybe this thing could trend down here and then start popping to the upside. So uh, I, I'm not like, I, I wouldn't put too much stock in that chart. We're just looking at it kind of, um, I just cause, you know, just cause why not? It's, it's fun to look at um, some different correlations and different um, uh, comparisons to assets. Uh, in this case, we've got Monero times the dollar index. The reason that we multiply by the dollar index is because typically risk assets are inversely correlated with the dollar index. So if the Dixie is going up, and your asset is also going up, um, that's actually like performing really well. And we do the same thing with gold. It just, it's, it gives you a better, um, a better idea of how the asset is really performing relative to like kind of the macro um, situation in terms of, um, in terms of dollars. And gold is actually a really good chart to look at, to look at that as well. Uh, but you'll see that there's really nothing to look at here. It's, it's, it's the same story as, as before, right? It's just flat, but there's not doing much. So, um, Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed being bored here, looking at all the correlations from Monero to all the other stuff, or at least some of the other important stuff. Um, let's take a look at the transactions. Monero transactions are yeah, basically the same, right? We're, we're sitting about um, in between 20 and 25,000 transactions per day. Um, I do like that we, we do seem to have been trending up now since really the bottom of, of the bear market. Um, it's, it's a very like mild trend to the upside, but it's definitely there. Um, so that's nice. Um, we can also look at, let's take a look at the hash rate. We never look, we don't look at the hash rate enough anyways. So, uh, mining difficulty per day. Good. We need to look at the difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, okay. So 
where did we convert to random x 2019 we converted to random x right about yeah uh, try that again there we go yeah so we converted to random x right around there um and we've kind of been flat right it's things are just kind of uh flattened off here it's interesting because um this almost almost you would almost say that this has some kind of like correlation to the price as well so um yeah, uh, I suppose, you know, we just need to turn on more Monero miners. Um, we need some more black hats out there hacking um, government computers and setting them to be Monero miners. Just kidding. Don't come at me, government. Christ, they, those guys will come at you for saying anything. Uh, but it was just a joke, right? So you can't uh, can't come at me. No. Uh, Hack those Kubernetes yeah. clusters to mine Monero. That's right. Um, but only only against the government, not against um, like regular people. Unless you want to like mine, like hack their computer, mine, and then deposit Monero for them into their account. This is all Let theoretical, like uh, like in Minecraft kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is all testnet kind of stuff. I would never um, recommend anyone hacking anyone ever, especially the government. Please don't hack the government. <laughs> all right, anyways, enough um, in incriminating speech. Let's go to something else. Uh, average transaction fee. I don't think there's... Oh, here we go. Tweets per day. We got any more tweets happening? Mm, kind of, not really. Maybe let's take a look at the um, at the moving averages on this one. Sometimes you have to smooth this out. We'll do 30-day moving average. Wow, okay, so we had a big-ass pump in January um, 2023. Wait, oh, they stopped reporting on it. Oh, yeah, because Twitter probably shut down their APIs. They're assholes. Oh, that's all, that's all from 2023? Yeah. Okay. Man, we had. Womp, that's interesting. Womp, so we womp. did have a lot of... <laughs> uh, yeah. At, at the turn of last year, when Monero was performing relative price to everybody else doing better, um, there was a lot of Monero tweets. Interesting. I'm curious what this chart would be now. Yeah. Mr. Musk, could you please reopen the API? No, he's not going to do that. <laughs> he shut it down. He, he went the other way. Twitter uh, knitter is, is dying. I didn't um, realize he, sh he shut down the, the API to Twitter to X. Yeah, I mean, probably... Um, Probably Tux could tell us more, but like Knitter has not been working for me very well for for a while now. Maybe there's some instances instances that are still working, but um, yeah, they're kind of like draw, like pulling that back. Yeah, it's it's kind of sad. Uh, Twitter originally they they stopped letting people use API for free for free, and then Knitter moved into a web scraping model. Well, now in order to view almost anything on Twitter, you have to be logged in, and so there was this method that somebody made up that would generate like. It would use uh, the way that Android accounts are generated on an Android device, where if you install Twitter, you can just look at Twitter without being logged in. It would basically use that to generate like 20,000 guest accounts. So you had like this large repository of accounts that could use the Twitter API. But Twitter seemed to kind of shut that down also. Uh, hmm. And so all the Knitter instances are slowly going away. Mine still works on and off, um, but I'm going to have to shut it down soon, unfortunately. Yeah, there's your long day. answer. Did not know. You would think that Grok would be giving them enough income for that to for that. It might even hurt them. Like shutting that API down just kind of like reduces visibility and probably, you know, in reality it probably doesn't matter at all <laughs> because well they have one. It's just really expensive, which I've seen firsthand. Uh, Cake paying for what they get to have Cake Pay continue working. It's kind of a lot for the amount of requests you get. It's pretty expensive. Or it's mm -hmm. kind of little for what you're paying for. Interesting. Okay, well, sad day for Twitter. Well, sad day for Knitter, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, all right, I guess that's um, that's mostly it for Monero here. I, I guess we could go to um, we could pull up the the Bitcoin or sorry the Monero mentions on Google, but uh, maybe next week we'll do that. Uh, okay, so here's the Monero nodes: twenty two thousand five hundred thirty seven. Um, seems to be all over the place. Uh, or I mean, all over the world, and we we seem to be pretty consistently above twenty thousand now. I remember a couple years ago we were like twelve thousand, and now we're at twenty two thousand. I I am nice. slightly suspicious of this because we haven't had a commensurate increase in transactions per day. Like we've had a little bit of increase in transactions per day, but not we haven't doubled, right? Uh, we haven't gone to like forty thousand. So I do wonder um, how many of these nodes are like I don't know attempted surveillance honeypot nodes. I have to <laughs> assume it's pretty. Like, it's trivial for a large resource or even a medium resource actor to spin up a shitload of Monero nodes at various locations. So, 
Um, but you know, um, okay, it's not surprising if that's the case. We we knew the government. If Monero works, they're going to try and break it, right? They're going to they're going to do their best or chain analysis. As I say the government, but you know, also chain analysis. You need to rally so, everyone to get their uh, their toasters and their refrigerators and their cars all mining. <laughs> if we get you yeah, know, a few million of those, that would still make a small difference. <laughs> how yeah. is the Monero hash rate looking? Oh yeah, we um go back to that. Hash rate is sitting up here at three gigas. Uh, maybe not three gigas, more like two. Let's zoom in. It's been a little bit higher on average. Look at the past year. But long, long term, it's it's so it's actually really so not. right around long term it is. Right here is where random X turned on. So that's really that's right. really like where the important thing is. This first spike is just people converting over from random X. So. Mm -hmm. uh, in reality, probably what we should be looking at is something about like that. So, uh, I mean, it looks like you'd expect, right? Hash rate increased um, basically into uh, into the top of the bull market um, a little bit after. Actually, we kept we kept going up for a while, which was kind of cool. And then things um, it seemed like they flattened out, and then lately they it's like there's been this drop off here. So, I mean, it, it, this isn't these aren't like huge movements though either. Like two point eight to two point two. I mean, that is kind of big. That's like thirty. It's about thirty percent. Um, maybe slightly less than 30%. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's mostly mostly just flat, not, not too much changing there. So. I started mm -hmm. actively mining on my computer, which was originally built to be a miner. Oh, nice. Um, I've been using the Goo Packs. Have you, have you guys tried that out? Tux, you've tried that, right? Yeah, I love Goo Packs. So mm -hmm. awesome. Um, yeah, anybody who's like, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm interested in mining, but you know, I'm not, I'm not super technical or whatever. Uh, you don't get easier than Gupex, and it allows you to mine via P2 pool. Um, and it's literally just downloading the application, running the software, turning, you know, turning it on, entering a, your unique, uh, Monero receive address. It has to be, you know, a base address can't be like a sub address. So create a new wallet. Enter your Monero address and you hit the start button on the P2 pool chain, and then you hit the start button on the you know on the Monero miner application, and that's it. And it just goes like it's really it's really hard to fuck up. Yeah, and the big thing is that it lets hmm. you mine P2 pool using third party nodes, which it's still recommended to use your own. But the official Monero GUI client, uh, if I remember correctly, doesn't let you mine P2 pool on. Uh, or mine at all on third-party nodes. So right. So yeah, you don't even need to have a, a f your own full node up and running, which obviously recommended to do so. But like for people, like it, it just makes it so easy to just get started, right? And then you could slowly perfect your, you know, make it more pure. Maybe eventually you start running a full node and 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 using that. But if you just want to get it up and running, it takes no more than like two minutes. I mean, it, it makes thing. sense that you should you should be able to point. Maybe that's something we could um, ask for a change in the Monero GUI wallet is that because, I mean, you might be running your node on your local network on your maybe your laptop or your desktop, and then maybe you want to mine on your laptop or you want to mine on your refrigerator and your toaster and mm -hmm. your doorbell alarm. Uh, and you want to point that all to your, um, you know, to your own local network node. I mean, I could definitely see valid use cases there. The more yeah, narrow mining you do, the less CPU cycles it has to spy on you. <laughs> you <think laughs> <about it> that <laughs> That's hilarious. How, how, how could we? How could you simplify it though to the point where somebody can kind of easily turn these Internet of Thing devices into Monero miners? Like, what would be the uh, the way of going about that? I mean, it's already like if you don't have a display, it's not going to be like you know as like point and click easy, right? If if it doesn't have a display, like if you're trying to, if you're trying to get your car radio to mine Monero, right? There's a chance it runs Linux, but there's also a chance you have to like do some stuff to get to a terminal, right? So that's not recommended. But if you have, like, let's say you've got a, um, a refrigerator that's like a Samsung refrigerator. Those usually have Android tablets in them. You could theoretically run uh, mine Monero using the Termux way which I know some people have mentioned and shown before, which does work. It's very slow. Uh, you know, phone hardware is not great at mining random mux, but it does work. It does work. 
I but if you if it's just a some... computer, then goo packs, honestly. Goo packs. I've never heard of goo packs. Maybe oh, yeah, no, heard goo, of it. goo packs has been around for it's been around for a while now. I think it's almost like two years. Um, oh. but yeah, they've done a they've done a. It's become. I've seen it's that people are starting to. To notice it and realize how how awesome it is, just for its ability to make P two pool mining. It's like when I when I bought this computer, I bought it off of Mike Custom Tech, uh, paid with Monero, and he built it to be a Monero miner, um, slash computer that we use in our studio. And he sent it like all set up, even with, like with XMR rig ready to go and P two pool set up. Um, but like I don't know, I don't know what happened. I like tried running it like a few times, and for whatever reason, like I couldn't get the P two pool to link up with the XMR rig, and I just walked away from it. I just didn't have time, uh, you know. Moved on to other things, so I I never got the miner up and running on this thing. And then last week, I was like, it was actually during the show last week. Somebody had brought up Goopax. I'm like, I just gotta, I just gotta give that a go, and I did it after the show, and it literally took two minutes, and bam mining on my cpu like no no thought no thought required not that it's not it's not good to uh you know use your brain and try to like actually understand what's going on behind the scenes but it does make it super simple and uh i I definitely see it gaining uh gaining a lot more traction so what does your hardware look like uh that's that's a good question like a ryzen <clears throat> yeah, it's, a, it's probably yeah, it's a Ryzen. dedicated. It's probably a Ryzen 950 950X. Yeah, let me see. Man. I took a, what was my? Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm I getting, have like, I'm getting like ten miner. ten cents a day mining. Nice. So, uh, hey, would Monero's a thousand bucks? That'll be uh, uh, closer to a buck, you know. So I was getting um, eleven thousand hashes per second. Okay, so you've probably got like a twelve core, something like that. Eleven kilo yeah, hashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably um, a fifty nine hundred X. Yeah, those seem to be really popular. The fifty nine hundred X. No, yeah, they're actually yeah, I got, some no, of the most efficient CPUs. You yeah, can I got the AMD Ryzen 9 50, uh, 5950 X sixteen. Core. Oh, you do have fifty nine fifty X. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You might not have the MSR uh, mod applied. Um, which is like goo packs can do it, but sometimes it doesn't work. Um, sometimes it gives an error, uh, but it applies this MSR mod, which it's like modifications to the OS that, uh, for this specific CPU that helps it mine faster, but it's not recommended to do that always. If it's like your main system that you're like using for other stuff, because oftentimes it ends up disabling some security things. So if it's just a mm-hmm. miner, that's fine. If it's not, I wouldn't recommend that, but 11 kill hashes is not bad at all. That's, that's, that's pretty good. So that's how would I, I how better. would I go about pumping it up to its max? You may have to. Um, are you using Goopax? Yeah. When you when you run it, um, does it tell you that it failed to apply the MSR mod? And you're on Windows, probably right. Yeah, I'm on Windows. Okay, you probably have to s- disable memory isolation, which is something I'll have to show you later. Okay. Okay. Cool. But yeah, there's probably a way to get it and pump those numbers up just a little more. Yeah. <laughs> get 11 cents. I mean, I, I do, we do use this computer for, for other things and, you know, for, for yeah, our show and, like, it. saving stuff. But also, I, I, I bought it with the intention of being a Monero miner, so I really, don't, I really don't care if I burn the thing out. Like, that was, that was the whole idea. So I'd like to That's one thing that's it, so cool about Monero mining is that um, with CPU mining, like, the, the testing that they did, on that chip before they shipped it is vastly more than you're going to use it on a day-to-day basis, even if you're mining Monero, um, at least if you're not overclocking. Whereas like GPUs, and if you're mining on GPUs, those tend to burn out over time, um, even if you're not overclocking. So um, that that is one thing that's nice. Like you're, you're not going to burn out your CPU mining Monero unless you start fiddling with um, with BIOS settings and overclocking, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's running yeah. under a decent temp. And are you running Windows on that or Linux? Windows. Okay, yeah, I figured. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Tux. I know, I know that hurts. Uh, <laughs> Here's that dagger you just stabbed in. Every time back. someone says they run Windows, I just die slightly more. Yeah, but you know, we, we this is a good sign, right? Like, so the fact that 
Goo packs is is so easy that somebody like me is just gets it up and running with no problems. is is fantastic. It's good though. And like I, we want Bill Gates to know. <laughs> I do think well, you know, we we need to see more mining going on, and it with Monero right like right now they're it is just out of. You know, you're you're volunteer. It's like a it's a like a, you're just volunteering, right? It's a sacrifice. There's really, um, you know, there's there's no there's not much of a, a benefit other than knowing that you're supporting the Monero network. So I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what needs to be done, but I I feel like we do need to get to a point where more people are just mining. Monero, right? There needs to be added incentive. I like this idea of of merge mining with other projects as potentially being the the incentive. What do you what do you guys think of, think of that? Yeah, I think that would be wonderful. I think it would help a lot to have CPU mine projects that uh, I would like to see some of these other projects that are launching with CPU mining to just merge mine with Monero. Like you get the security of the Monero chain by default and like everybody benefits. It's just it's kind of annoying when people don't do that. Maybe there's technical reasons for it, and and I'm just kind of complaining out oh, my for ass. Not mining? Yeah, like why wouldn't I mean, most you? People if you're going to launch have, a CPU like, algo right now, if people pay for their energy, I don't think really anybody is going to make money unless you live in the parts of the world with the cheapest electricity, and then you're barely making money. So for some people, it actually just continually costs them money. And most people don't have a really efficient CPU like a Ryzen 950 950X. They're going to have a worse one, so it's going to be less mm -hmm. efficient. So I think no, for I mean, a lot I, of people, it's the energy cost. I, I get that. Like, I understand that, um, you know, energy is really cheap in the U.S., but a lot of other places it's not at all. Um, I just mean, like, new projects. As new projects launch, and they launch with CPU mining algorithms, a lot of them are launching with their own, like, different tweaked CPU mining. Like, why wouldn't they just merge mine with RandomX? You, you get to tack on to the security of the Monero chain, um, you know, since we have the largest CPU hash power. It's like I, I just find it annoying that people yep. won't they won't launch projects like, it, OK, like if you're doing some different mining algorithm, OK, whatever, that's your bad decision. But if you're going to do a CPU mining algorithm, like why wouldn't you mine with with random X? Maybe there's a yeah. technical reason, but I don't know. Which coin was it that started merge mining with Monero recently? DarkFi. DarkFi. So, yep. DarkFi announced they're going to do it. Tari, uh, whenever, <laughs> when they when they launch, uh, They'll do it. Tari, man. we getting what, hyped up about it on Twitter. We got to have a thing on Tari, I think, soon, because I think they did did announce that they're closer than ever. Yeah, to, uh... I'll bring it up in the news. Okay, yeah. What's going on. So we'll, we'll get we'll get that going on the on the show, too. Get the Tari people up here. We haven't had them on here for years. Uh, Privacy Dad asked a question. Can you say something about how mining will work yeah. on an auto device? Yeah, so I can't say much in terms of, like, deep technical detail, but... Um, you know, first and foremost, it's built to be a dedicated node, right? So the mining we just added as a fun thing, right? Like if we're, if we're here talking about how wouldn't it be cool if my refrigerator mined, we thought it'd be silly if your Nodo itself wasn't also mining, but it's really not built to be that, right? It doesn't have these, you know, it doesn't have a Ryzen in there. It, you know, it's, it's not built to be a miner, but it's going to be, uh, plug and play as simple as it is to get your node up and running. It'll be th that simple to just turn on the mining function and it'll just hum along in the background. Uh, and it'll be mining via P2 pool. Um, you know, and all that, all the same stuff as, as the node in general, uh, using Tor by, by default. So it will be mining. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna make any money off of it, but you're gonna know that you're in addition to supporting the network by, by providing uh, a node, you're also adding some some nice little hash power to the, to the not going to be blazing any trails um yeah. <laughs> but yeah it'll just be like you said it'll be a nice turn on turn off it'll be easy yeah. you don't have to think about it that's like if a mid-range phone ship if i were to guess the performance yeah we, we sell a hundred thousand nodos you know then it might <laughs> it might make a dent so. i pulled up the um google trends for monero cryptocurrency um you can see, obviously, we've got the big spike from the bull market. That's the past five years. If we look at the past 12 months, uh, we got a little bit of a spike up here, actually. So hmm. that's interesting. And you'll notice China seems to be pretty close to the top of the list of people that are searching for Monero on Google. So 
And if we go to the five year chart, um, yeah, China like really pops out. So looks like about 86 people have searched for Monero in China. <laughs> or maybe it's 86% of the people in China have searched for Monero. I'm not sure which one. I'm sure it's one of those. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Imagine. I think our price is right, a little bit see. higher. Do you guys uh do you guys want to continue on some of the price action here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. I don't want to um, pivot or anything from the mining conversation too early in case there's more to be explored there. No, I mean, the, yeah, the only other thing of like, what, what do you see as the future of Monero's mine? Like, what's going to take us to the next level in, in Monero, growing the Monero mining network? Is it just going to be merge mining? Is that what gets us there? Or is there going to be some other impetus, something that's going to, like, wh where is the next big level of, of mining coming in from? Transactions per day, price, adoption. Like those are the things that will cause more mining to come online. Just really, a, and a, as price gr price goes up. Yeah, I mean you can you can see. So if we if we zoom out a little bit to the larger picture here, uh, going back, you can see that um, I mean Monero's hash rate increased through pretty much the whole bull market, um, and then kind of peaked out. We had a kind of a secondary peak here. Um, but yeah, like another price run will push, should push narrow mining a little bit higher. The the incentive structures just um just change in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I have to believe that more up. people would start turning on as as um you know as price goes up. But yeah, I mean merge mining as well. Like especially if you get something like DarkFi, um and a lot of people are really excited about it. Um, hopefully you know it can steal some of that attention from some of the other projects out there. Um, mm -hmm. I just. I haven't done like a whole lot of research investigation into these other privacy smart contracts platforms. I know that the, the looking into it that I have done or, or the other people in our community that have done it, um, it seems dubious. It seems suspicious. But the dark fight guys, like I really respect the way that they've come about this. Like they've come on the show. They've talked with us. All these other projects, I don't remember them coming to us in the in the past year saying, hey, we're going to launch a privacy project. We'd like to work with you guys. We know that Monero is like, is solid. We know that you guys have smart engineers. We'd like, um, you know, we just, I just haven't seen that interaction happen from them, which makes me suspicious that it's just a, a cash grab. Whereas mm -hmm. dark file, like they, they talk to us, they come to the events. Um, and then the things that they say are like reasonably good. Like they're, they're like, you can see them really working through these details and they haven't just rushed to market with a project, um, you know, to, to try and capitalize on some, on some bull market. So, uh, like just, it, you know, and maybe that's not quite enough, like from my that's that's kind of like a half pleb level analysis right there, but from my perspective there, like using um, the resources that I have without like really deep diving into their project and the details of it, um, it just seems like there's a good chance that this could actually be like a solid project. So, um, yeah, I mean maybe maybe launching a new con new coin like DarkFi and Ortari uh, that's merge mined with Monero that maybe that could actually do a lot to help our hash rate bump. So maybe all of the above, right? Price and new projects and merge mining, etc. Agreed. Agreed. How about Xano? We've we've been talking like Xano's been coming up a bit, right? They've been they've been participating in the Monero Topias, um, Cake Wallet just added Xano, right? Right, Tux, or it was added, it was added recently, right? Oh, Xano, uh, not yet, but we're going to have some support for it uh, in the near future. Is what should be mm. planned. Okay, Xana I thought I thought, I thought like, so, yeah. something was announced, right? Like it, Xana will be getting added to Cake, correct? Yes. Yeah, we will. Okay. Yeah, we will add it. It's not in there yeah. yet, but it will be. Right. Xana chart is setting up for another move. This is a pennant right here. Yeah, Xana's making yeah. some moves. Yeah, we had that big that big pump on Xana, um, that I was sad to have missed. Same. Uh, I keep missing out on all these. Two in other coins because i i have mostly one <laughs> they, they the participated one. in monerotopia and it's it's been up ever ever since yeah now they i think they were i think they were great there they were like like you know similar to what you're saying about dark fi they were uh open to just having conversations about the technology right we had that that really cool really awesome debate uh on proof of work versus proof of stake and uh, we had Andre from Xano 
representing the pro proof of stake argument and they're 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 doing interesting things they're not just some copycat coin uh they're trying out new tech inventing new things and they're not trying to be monero right they've the uh andre has talked about how um you know he he thinks monero has achieved a lot uh, in terms of winning the digital cash space and as people should know, Andre was perhaps one of the er earliest developers of Monero itself, right? He created the, the first implementation of Monero. Um, the first crypto note, he, he basically created the first crypto note implementation. And so he's not just, he's not just some, some guy with a new project. He's an yeah. old school Monero guy. Uh, but like I said, he's not try He's not out there trying to replace Monero. He's trying to do something different and recognizes that Monero is winning as as digital cash. So that's that's why I I give that project deference. I don't know what your what your take is on it. I definitely think that um, if we get fast adoption and people start needing um, privacy cash. <laughs> uh, to, to a significant degree, and we get a lot of adoption, let's say 100x in adoption, um, Monero's not going to be able to service the entire global need for private digital money. Um, we're going to need another coin. Like, okay, maybe in two decades we could get there, but not in the next five years. <clears throat> Definitely not not even the next 10 years. So we'll, we will need allies and partners. Like, um, where I do believe in shelling points and network effects and stuff like that, those are reasonably good ideas, but they are not like hard and fast biblical truths. Um, so I, I really do enjoy seeing, especially especially since they're exploring proof of stake. Um, and, and especially, you know what I really loved is when I asked them about um, proof of stake versus proof of work and like a fair launch. And um, like he just openly acknowledged like, yeah, yeah, that's there, there is the possibility that doing some kind of proof of work launch needs to happen um, to, to fairly transition into proof of stake. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he was like, he already like, he'd already thought all of that through. It was like not a surprise um, question for him. Um, so, I mean, I do like the idea of proof of stake. I don't want to take a position like that. It can't work, that it's impossible. Like it might be able to have, like, there might, there might be algorithms out there that could produce a real proof of stake network that's egalitarian. Um, and that maybe is launched in some way that, that is fair, that everyone has a reasonable opportunity to get their hands on, on some of the supply. Um, I, I just think it's a great idea to, um, to explore what else is out there. You know, and like you said, this is the guy that that launched the first implementation of um, of crypto note. So you can't just like dismiss the guy and be like, "Oh, well, yeah. it's a shit coin because it's proof of stake." Like he, you know, he has he has Nicholas mind. Van Saberhagen in his Rolodex, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, he he did tell us that Nicholas Van Saberhagen is still around. Um, I don't I don't know if you remember that one, and that uh, he's still you know he he communicates with him. So it's all, you know, he, he was part of the original crypto note team. Um, the other thing too is he's, they're giving back, right? Because they're, they're helping pro propel new research and development in this space. And they've, they've uh, for example, worked with Co to create Zarkanium, which is their uh, essentially privacy proof of work system so they they it, they were they figured out co essentially figured out how you could do proof of work mining privately that was a major breakthrough but my point is they you know they funded that right so they're contributing in that way too kind of um helping to f to fund the the monero devs whether it's for, you know if it's for their 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 own project but i monero could potentially benefit from these types of things down the line yeah. I mean, I think reaching out and making friends where we're able is, is always a good idea. I mean, what, what, point... are, what are some other projects uh, that we that we'd put into that like realm of uh, respect, right? Hmm. Man, you caught me out here. Um, <laughs> I know uh, at, at the risk of like being a shill that um, that bit tensor project that I told you guys about, it's not, it's not private, right? It's not a privacy project, but they did a fair launch. There was no pre mine. Um, it's, it's kind of like both proof of work and proof of stake. So they're, um, they're basically an AI platform and they have subnets and they have a bunch of um, providers that are, they're basically providing um, GPU power 
for AI stuff, for like neural network stuff. And each subnet mm. um, programs like different fine-tuned training for um, for this AI stuff. So you use the coin to pay for access to these subnets. They're still nascent. Um, they've had a crazy run. They're one of the best performing coins of the past 12 months. Um, I, I would even dare to say that they are the best performing coin of the past 12 months. Uh, I would obviously need to go look at all you know 10,000 coins or <laughs> however many there are. There are. Um, but it's had a crazy run up and it's starting to get mentioned now. Um, the, like the exchanges don't even want to list it. Like even though it's run so much and even though it's like literally in the top 50 market cap, um, it's still not listed on exchanges hardly at all. There's like one, maybe it's like, um, Mex C or one of those like, random shitcoin exchanges that you shouldn't trust at all. Um, I think it was Mex C that was, that was freezing people's funds recently. And, and they're actually behaving kind of like Binance. So they might even be related to the same people. Anyways, um, the exchanges don't want to list it because they didn't get it for free, right? So it's the same kind of story. Like, apparently they didn't pay them off and they didn't do the pre-mine and um, the exchanges didn't get it for free. So they won't list it, even though this coin is now in the top 50. Um, and it's actually like does real work and there's real development happening on it. So um, I kind of have some respect for that project. I originally was just like, I don't care. It's AI coin. I'm, you know, there's, it's like, it's called BitTensor and it's um, TAO is the ticker. Um, I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to buy it because the hype is going to be, you know, whatever. Um, but Learning a little bit more about it, it seems like the project is, is fairly legit. Like, um, so I got some respect for that coin, I guess. It's a new up-and-comer. Um, what else might we have respect for? I don't know. Uh-oh, the body freeze? Uh, uh, or is it just me? Say what? Oh, okay, here. Okay. okay, maybe it was just my connection. Body, somebody, Sorry, somebody's, at, somebody's uh, commenting on your on your take on BitTensor regarding Let's BitTensor. See. Already nine billion? Is it nine billion? Is it really that high? Let's go check it out. I didn't think it had gotten that, quite that high yet, but um, maybe I am wrong. Oh no, I'm gonna go to the evil um, <laughs> um, coin market cap. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> Fuck you, CZ. I could have gone to like Coin Gecko or something, I guess. Uh, let's see, Tau, Bit Tensor. Yeah, they put it down at two oh four. But where is the market cap? Here we go. Uh, no, I think the market cap's only like 2.7. That's what it looks like. Um, are you looking at another chart, something different than I am? Maybe coin market cap is just lying, right? That's that's possible. Let's go to Coin Gecko. Although Coin Gecko is owned by the same people, so I don't see why it would be any different. Oh, is it? Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, so on the right here, this is the market cap, right? This number. Um, so you'll notice that we hit 3 billion ish. So yeah, 2.9 Monero is 3 billion market cap and BitTensor should be Oh, here it is. Okay. Cool. They are they are now accurately reporting it. For a while they weren't even putting it at the proper ranking um, on on coin market cap. Although this is CoinGecko. Yeah, so it looks like 2.7 billion right now. Um so I mean it, it could, you know, I mean it could grow to something more, but maybe most of the big gains are behind it. Maybe not. If there's a big bull market, you could see a lot of this, a lot of these market caps getting inflated. But um, AGRS helpful for XMR governments. I need to look at that. All right, I'm gonna write that down like right now. AGRS. I'm just probably just gonna FOMO some some cash into AGRS. <laughs> please, guys. Please do this. Is that that actually was not financial advice? So <laughs> I know nothing about it other than what this dude. I'm said. running with it. <laughs> other than somebody <laughs> mentioned it, I'm in Aerotopia. Bye, 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 bye. The, the thing is, it's like the AI hype is going to be so real if and when like another major hockey stick exponential move happens in these markets. Like that shit's just going to explode. Like you just know it is. And I, I don't want to like, I don't want to encourage too much degeneracy. So I feel responsible slightly. I feel guilty now. Um, Why did you get sued but, by the SEC for uh, giving bad financial advice? Yeah. Yep. Since I'm certified and approved i'm 100 totally. percent not certified or approved at all like so just in case those any autist autistic people listening that was a joke <laughs> please do not take that seriously um but yeah i mean i do also want to kind of give it to you guys straight in terms of like how shit's gonna like things are likely going to unfold as bull markets unfold um the ai hype is real like it's not going away it's been persistent for two years now and it's only getting stronger so um, I think that Tau is an honest project. Maybe this other one, AGRS, is also an honest project. I don't know. I, I would have to look into the details. This is the first time hearing of it. Um, so yeah, I just you know just wanted to throw that out there. A little little note there. Oh, uh, you know another another project that I like. You're saying what other what other projects might be um, good? I like Avax. I think Avax is interesting. It's a 
gossip protocol. It's a directed acyclic graph network. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, the fees jumped up. I think we've talked about Apex before. Apparently, the fees jumped up um, when Bitcoin fees jumped up. Um, it, it seems like there's some potential there. Um, the devil's always in the details, but um, you know, the, it's an interesting project. It seems like it might be scalable. Uh, it's not private either, right? It's not default private like Monero is. So there's that. Florida is saying many thanks to the Monero community introducing me to Session. Are there any Monero groups in Session that I might be interested in joining? Uh, that's another part to Session, right? Uh, Oxen. They participated in Monerotopia. That's another yeah, I think someone mentioned Oxen in project team earlier. that I respect um, for the work that they're doing and in a, in a way that it's respectful of Monero and alongside Monero, right? Um, and they're inventing new things, creating new things in, in the I know it's a lot more different space. now, but it's uh, based off of crypto now, right? Oxen. Yeah, yeah. Since and now it's... And I think now they're they're creating a session coin, like they're getting rid of Oxen and transitioning it to session. I I'm gonna I want to I'm gonna have them on at some point to get the update on that. I don't know if anybody if, if you guys follow that at all, but session I mean I, is very impressive, right? I, what what they've achieved at session the decentralized uh, encrypted chat app. I mean, uh, I to an extent, it is very like costly to run a node mm -hmm. an oxen node uh, to stake because you have to stake a lot of oxen mm -hmm. Hmm. but they they they've built the product that people actually use right it's not just kind of like vaporware stuff like people use session i'm i'm, I'm impressed by that yeah another one yeah, i mean uh, i definitely use it another uh project particle right we've had them at monerotopia uh, what's impressive with them is the uh, the marketplace they're building and the and then basic swap basic swap right basic swap for doing essentially atomic swaps between different cryptos um, that looks like it's gaining gaining a little traction I, I, have you guys tried it out Tux did do you ever give it a go no I really need to I've been meaning on it because it, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, so maybe we'll have uh, we'll have them on the show as well. We can do a demo with that. But those are those are the ones that stick out in my mind. Actually, all, it's all the projects that participate in Monerotopia. That's so I'm wondering if there's like any I'm uh, missing that we should be like that should I have my my eye on that are part you know that should be part of the Monero privacy ecosystem that we have here that I'm missing. But I don't know. I think those are the main ones. I, I wouldn't put Zcash in that in, into that group. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Am I being too hard? What do, you, what do you guys think? I mean, I'd love for them to participate in Monerotopia and come present. And they're certainly contributed uh, an amazing amount of technology to the space, right? Research and development. So yeah. definitely respect there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I would. Yeah. I, I would definitely put them in that in that sphere. One hundred percent. I don't know if you guys just not the implementation, just not like the coin itself. Like, yeah, that's what turns me off so much. And it's got me saying no, but it's like you, you got to ignore that part and respect what they've what they've done in terms of technology. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, getting the um, tremendous amount, eliminating the trusted setup and then even the implementation of turn styling the coins. I mean, that's. That's really not an ideal situation, but it's the best that you could probably do after eliminating the trusted setup um, with uh, with Halo, or maybe it was Halo 2 or something. But yeah, when they implemented that, basically all of the coins that are in Z shielded addresses, um, you have they have to turn style. Like the next transaction has to be a turn style so mm -hmm. that um, they can account for, <clears throat> to make sure that like no coin was secretly printed, right? Because if the seven people colluded, they could have printed coins. So they do a turn style so that if that, if that collusion happened, you would be able to see that because there would be too many coins passing through the turnstile. Um, so I thought at least like that was honest. I, I had to give them some credit there after um, being a detractor for a long time. It was nice that one of them finally explained that to me because I asked them for like months. I was like, can someone, is there anyone out there that can explain this to me? Like, do you have a mitigation for that? And finally, someone took the time to explain this. Said, okay, well, that's, that's nice. Um, yeah, the technology that they've developed is, is pretty cool. It's being used in a lot of places. Um, I'd be happy to hear them 
present on their technology, <laughs> you know, at Minerotopia, not not the coin, not the not the usage, the money itself. I don't think it's good money, but you know, we all know that already. Yeah, they made they made a lot of mistakes in that respect. Um, I'm not I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, they they also the yeah the whole corporate structure that they had going on and. It, being in bed with like large investors, right? That I think, I think that's maybe what happened to them. They were, were being, they were, they were always designing towards being able to integrate with the centralized systems as opposed to designing towards being digital cash, right? It's, yeah, it's, maybe that's what my got them. Take. Yeah. Right. They were like just genuinely like they were genuine developers. Most probably most of the people were genuine in the project. And then but they had like made these agreements, some kind of like corporate agreements. Exactly. Um, probably they're like some of the Zcash maximalists are gasping at that statement. They'd be like, no, there was nothing. You can't prove that. Maybe that's and maybe we can't prove it. But it does feel like there is a big corporate connection. Like when you're connected, when you get the kinds of people shilling your coin that have shilled Zcash, it's like, yeah, but something happened in the background there. Right. You got like Barry Silbert out there, right? It's like, like, what are, like why is Barry Silbert so yep. pro Zcash and ignoring Monero? It makes no sense. He's this extremely like intelligent guy. He knows crypto, uh, but he, he, he rather shill Zcash than talk about its competitor that's like, that has achieved much more in terms of adoption. It, ma it makes no sense. There, there's got to be some incentive for him to do that. Yeah. And how did you get listed on Coinbase? A privacy coin get listed on the New York registered Coinbase. Like that's a, that's an eyebrow raising event as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's um let's fly through this macro. And uh, so we'll, we'll the cryptocurrency market. Not much has changed other than last week we talked about. Hey, you know this thing expected to probably keep going. That's Bitcoin. Um, on a broad view here, we've got this kind of like interesting structure on the triangle where it was like uh, a rising wedge that closed and then a rising wedge that opened. And then we realized that, hey, this trend line, this is like really probably the trend line to be watching here. So probably things will just continue steadily moving to the upside there um, slowly, slowly. I really, again, um, we're, I'm looking for cues from the macro, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, I am looking for probably soon to take profit on, on some of these positions I've had um uh for a while now so um total crypto market cap it looks similar right kind of in this channel here just continuing to be in this channel nothing really not too much happened with the crypto market actually i mean yes it went up a little bit the past week but no major um no major changes happen uh, we continue to see a lot of inbound volume to the etf right so um ever since the etf was launched there's been um and especially after grayscale was selling trying to rebalance their books to to get their ETF to be the spot price, right? They've got to sell that Bitcoin so that their their Bitcoin holdings is the exact amount um, of the price that it is on stock market. So they had to sell, but then a lot of ETFs, uh, a lot of volume has been moving into the ETFs apparently. Um, and that is uh, assuming I believe the guys that are that are um, posted that on Twitter. Um, so I, I think I believe them. It seemed like that was a common story that I saw from guys that I, I tend to, I tend to trust mostly ish trust. Um, when it comes to like just factual stuff, you know, like is volume moving into the ETF or not, right? That's a, that's more of a factual statement than a than a forward looking statement or than an opinion kind of statement. Um, dominance um, dominance is just kind of like chilling at this uh, this sort of dotted line right here, right that previous peak. Um, so I guess I don't know. Maybe this thing will just sort of continue trending sideways. Bitcoin still has a lot of visibility on it. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll just fly through fly through some macro stuff. Um, we'll look at the reverse repos because to me, this is becoming more and more a big, like a big point in my mind um, to be looking at for cues on what's going to happen with the future. So the zero point is down here. Let's just drop a line right there. Why is that not working? All right. I don't know why that's not working. Usually that works. I don't want to waste too much time trying to get this to work. Alt H is not working. Okay, whatever. Oh, that's why I have... I had all that stuff muted. Anyways, okay, so uh, the reverse repos are coming down to the downside. We saw uh, another drop this week, right? That's what that's what this little um, tick down. So again, money is coming out of the reverse repos. I think that, and, and it might not be that I have the full mechanism here exactly on point, but at least the correlation is that these reverse repos, as money comes out of these reverse repos, it does look like that somehow fuels um, moves into risk assets, stock market, crypto, 
Um, and even bonds, it seems like it's even supporting bonds somehow. Um, so yeah, we're going to be looking at these reverse repos. Once this, once this shit runs dry, um, I really, uh, you know, I, I'm really looking towards the end. I, I'm going to be saying, okay, there could be some big pullback um, to happen if these reverse repos um, go to the, you know, like run out. Bonds haven't changed, although they took another, they took a, a dip down here. This now is starting to look like a chart that has, um, that has a downtrend, right? Like you might draw some kind of trend like that on the, on the bonds um, where, where things are kind of moving to the downside here. So if things um, continue along that trend, um, you know, we're just going to be looking at this again. We're looking at, for a crash in the bond market, a renormalization of the yield curve. <clears throat> and potentially if that happens simultaneously with the end of reverse repo, that's when it's like batten down the hatches, um, get prepared for a crash or a big move to the downside and get ready to buy. Um, especially if the fed intervenes, we had an interesting candle on the Dixie, um, on Friday. So this is called an engulfing pattern. Um, so effectively the, the market opened lower on Friday than it closed on Thursday, but then it moved to the upside and completely, um, this green, the close was higher than, um, than the close of the previous day. That's an engulfing pattern. It's a bullish signal in technical analysis. Um, and so you would, you would look at this and say, okay, at a minimum, we, we probably do expect that this thing is going to make it to this area right here. Um, potentially even to this like top side, but that would be quite far. And I, I think that would be quite a lot for the Dixie to make, um, considering that stocks still seem kind of bullish. Um, so the NASDAQ basically closed at it's all like, it's a new all time high for the NASDAQ, or at least in terms of close. Um, you know what it actually did set. Yeah. It just barely set a higher high on the wick on Friday. So yeah, stock markets are bullish. Um, the S and P especially, um, set a higher high, uh, on Friday as well. So stock markets continue to look positive. Uh, as we talked about, um, for example, the NASDAQ here, we expect at this point, I really do expect price to kind of just keep uh, trending up here. And then at some point, um, to touch this area, right. It's sh it stock should make it to that area. Um, and you'll notice that like, if things kind of can continue trending and maybe do that, um, that would, that would kind of sort of ish line up with the ending of the reverse repos. So, um, it, it's possible that like we get some big move to the upside and then maybe let's suppose, let's suppose we get a big crash, right? Oh, crap. Let's suppose we get a big crash of, um, of 30%. So let's erase this. Okay. Let's suppose that like. This is a very dubious, <laughs> squiggly yellow line, but let's suppose we get a crash of 30%. That would only take us down here into the moving averages. That would only take us, like, we would still be well above the bear market lows. And this is one thing that we do see with markets. We see where they will, um, before a big crash, uh, and we saw this in 2019, they pumped the shit out of the markets to the upside, well beyond what they really should have been, with like what you would expect even from the technical analysis. And then the crash was like 30%. Um, during the, the March 2020 events. Um, but because it had already pumped so much, the crash actually wasn't really that much lower. So um, if that happens um, here, um, say hello to inflation uh, in about 12 to 24 months if that happens. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what the stock market's looking like there. Um, things are still positive, right? The, the, the tea leaves continue to say up. Um, things look good. So, I mean, overall, like you just want to keep your plays, you, you want to stay in the market. You want to keep your plays, um, in play. Uh, I, I probably am looking to take some profit here on some of the coins, uh, or at least maybe like one or two of them. Um, especially if they continue pumping into some like statistical levels. Uh, and it's never wrong to take profit. Like they say, it's never wrong to take profit. And especially when you're in cryptocurrency and you're like playing in shit coins, like you really, the, the more volatile the asset, the more like crazy the asset that you're playing with, you need to take profit. You need to be more inclined to take profit. If you're in the stock market and you know they like, they always pump the stock market, then okay, stay in the stock market. And maybe you just hodly never get out. If you're in Monero, if you're in Bitcoin, maybe if you're in Ethereum, like the big headliner stuff, okay, maybe you just hodl that stuff. But when you're playing in like new shit coins and like stuff that does these crazy multiples, typically you want to take profit. Um, uh, because you're, you know, otherwise like it's just too often that it, it pumps crazy and then it pulls back and you're like, well, maybe it'll pump again and you're holding and it never does. And then you do a round trip. Um, so yeah, they say it's never wrong to take profit. Um, and then, uh, I guess we'll just, last thing we'll look at is gold. Gold is actually looking nice here. Um, this is the weekly chart. So each candle is a week. 
uh, it's still continuing to stay in this upper range. And as long as the stock market continues positive, I would say that um, expect gold to stay in this range. I don't like that gold is not pumping, but I mean, what are you going to do? They're going to pump that new money into the stock market. They're not going to pump it into gold. So at some point, gold will be the recipient of of um, of some of that liquidity, um, but it's not going to be the recipient of it now, at least not directly. So, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. That's all I got for you guys. Uh, maybe right. I could be nice and show you show you the shit coins really quick. <laughs> Maybe I can't. Yeah, an another one I, I failed to mention was Fira. I'd put them in that in that realm as well as oh, yeah. being part of the Monero ecosystem um, and contributing back to Monero in terms of uh, technology, research, and development. They might have right. Aren't, aren't they? They're looking to implement full membership proofs as well, and they might get there before we do. Um, really? Just because they're they're more nimble, right? There's uh, it's it's easier for them to to evolve uh, compared to Monero. I mean, Monero is is working on it, um, but I think Firo might be able to uh, implement it first, some version of it. That would be pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, that would be amazing. Looks like um, Bitcoin. So Link is pumped a good bit. That's the one I'm thinking about selling here soon. And then uh, Bitcoin Cash looks like it's performing quite well. Is that B no? Sorry, sorry, Bitcoin Cash, uh, TRX Tron. Nah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> the Uber, the Uber shitcoin. Uh, but yeah, Tron has been doing good as well. But remember, we talked about this too. He said, "Hey, in the next bull market, USDT <clears throat> they issue a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, they issue a lot of USDT on Tron, so it's just naturally going to have price support. Um, it's going to probably follow along with Ethereum." So. Uh, you know, just try not to be too salty that Justin's son is getting rich <laughs> off Tether <laughs> and shitcoinery. That's another project or coin, right? Like a, a, a private stable coin, right? We, we, we saw the attempt with Haven, um, but nobody's really cracked that nut yet. It's another interesting yeah. concept. It might be Something. fundamentally not achievable. Like algorithmic stable coins are really hard. If you could get an algorithmic stable coin to, to work, then you could probably implement privacy on that. But otherwise, if it's a stable coin, you need something backing it. Um, you know, so either you're gonna have to rely on trust, like the 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 counterparty that's holding that coin. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose you could launch a you could launch a Monero backed by USDT or backed by dollars or something. You, you'd still have the counterparty risk, but um, at least you wouldn't be able to see what's going on. That would be interesting. Yeah, just, just a pure algorithmic stable coin uh, seems untouchable. That would be brilliant because they wouldn't be able to like see what you did with it or freeze it. Like, if you, like, let's suppose, we know they're not going to do it, but let's suppose Tether said, hey, we're going to add privacy to our stable coin. And then, like, they won't be able to freeze anyone's funds because they won't know who did what on their network. They won't know which funds came from naughty, bad black hats or um, which ones came from good white hats that hacked bad people um, that should get hacked. Like, they would just they just wouldn't be able to see anything, right? So that would be brilliant. Mm -hmm. But then I don't think they would survive very long. I think the U.S. government would basically take them down immediately if they did that. Agreed, agreed. Well, I think that's all I got. All right. Today. I was trying to shorten awesome, the press man. report today, but man. I'm I know. Really <laughs> we, we went a completely different <laughs> route. That was no <laughs> fault of yours. No fault of yours. <laughs> well, we didn't have a um, special guest either, so it was yeah, reasonable to you, you were our special guest. Stuff. You were our oh, special guest you, today. You body. <laughs> heart, heart, heart emojis. All right, all man. All right.